This is Andy Perrault of Boxing News. I am joined by the savage Alan Babbage over Zoom. Alan, it's certainly been a while since uh, we last spoke, since you last spoke to the media. So in that time, um, how are you? How are you finding life? Yes, my brother. Good to talk to you again. Uh, it's fucked up. My life is fucked up right now. But, you know, it's just the price that you got to pay for being a... Uh, you know, public person in Croatia and being a boxer and everything. And kind of the way that I got into the, this scene was chaotic. So my fall will, will be, would be chaotic. And it, it proven to be just. Alan, the, the audio is gone. You can hear you. Okay, yeah. hey, should we start again? Yeah, like like I said, I just uh, the way I came onto the scene was chaotic, so I didn't I didn't uh, expect nothing less from my downfall. You <laughs> know, so everybody's on me right now, and yeah, yeah, this and that. But I'm gonna be back. You know, I don't I don't mind. Alan, I think downfall is a strong word. I wouldn't say downfall. Um, obviously you've, you've suffered the first defeat of your career, but. You've entertained fans. You're certainly been more entertaining fights, and I wouldn't say it's pushed you too far back. Um, but let's just reflect on, on that defeat to uh, Lucas Rosansky. It was certainly one which shocked a lot of people because of how uh, just emphatic it was in the first round. What What are your reflections on it now? Yeah, it was terrible. It was he. They tell me he out Babbage the Babbage. You know, I said it was it was it was a nightmare. You know, that, that was the one thing. I, I never wanted to lose like that, you know. I, I, I'm I okay with losing a 15-round war and stuff. Well, I'm okay with that, but to, lo to lose like this, like like on a, like what I do to other people, it's, it's such a, it was a big disappointment. You know? And I didn't, I was, I didn't even realize at the moment, it was two days after I realized what happened, you know. And uh, Croatia has been very, very, <laughs> not good for me uh, from that, you know. So, but we are like that, the country. We are a proud country, you know, and uh, we don't take the loss too too easily. Uh, so it it was a heavy loss, and I was uh, I was in in how can I explain it? You know, I, I was in in the wrong place in my head. You know? before that fight, for that fight, everything was wrong. You know? Everything was wrong. The build-up was good, and my training was good, and everything was good, but good is just not going to cut it, you know, on that stage. Alan, heading into the fight, everybody expected it to be a war, like you say, everybody expected it to be a very fan-friendly fight. Um, what was your, did you have a change in tactics or approach beforehand? Yeah, that, that was the one thing that fucked me up, because I really... I know I'm a good boxer. I keep saying that I have hundred down to fights, and I was almost in the on the in the Rio 16 Olympics. So I'm very good experienced boxer, but I want to show that you know, I want to show that for the first time in my life. I said, okay, I'm gonna listen to everybody, and I'm gonna try to box, and and I just I just uh, got stuck in between. Boxing and just destroying this guy. I just got stuck. I got stuck. I didn't know what to do. I felt alone in that ring. You know, I fell off with my longtime coach, uh, who was with me my whole career. So that happened like one month before the fight. It was the shit. I, I was left alone on the streets one my one month before my biggest fight of my life. But I say I'm not gonna quit, you know. I'm not gonna say, oh, I can't fight because of this, because of that, and I pay the price, you know. And I'll I'll do it all the same. I wouldn't say, listen, I'm not gonna fight because I don't have my trainer with me. I'm not I'm not gonna say that. So I went in, I follow, I uh, find a replacement, and you know, I did the best I could. I put everything into that fight, you know. So I don't feel bad of myself on that part because I really did everything I could. You know. People questioned after the fight, um, your changing trainer. Do you do you regret changing trainer? Do you think you might be able to go back to your old trainer? Have you have you thought about that? Well, well that's the hot hot topic now in Croatia, you know, but uh 
we kind of fell apart before that, you know, it was it was already on wobbly legs. So I don't know if, if we can be, it will be the best thing for me, you know, but I think it's very hard, you know, we are both kind of that kind of guy, like, fuck you guys, you know, and when we, when we go out, it will be pretty vicious. So to, it's pretty vicious, you know, so I don't know if we can come back from that, you know, so I, I'm not thinking about it yet because I just rest now, you know? try to rest. Let's go, move over, move over. My dog is going wild. <laughs> um, Alan, I know you're a very proud man. Um, I imagine the defeat was difficult to take. On a personal level, for your pride, um, how did it affect that? Oh my wait, I'm sorry. What did put over the Crazy. This dog is crazy. Sorry, can you repeat the question? For my um, fiance. No, your 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 pride. I know you're a very proud person. So to lose like that, um, how did it affect your pride? Well, it's, you can imagine, you know, you can imagine, bro. It's fucked up. Like I said, it fucked up my whole image. Everything I, I, I tried to create so hard, you know. It fucked up everything, bro. Really did, you know. But uh, like I said, I wasn't in there. I wasn't there. I wasn't aware of anything. I didn't know where my corner was. I didn't know which which corner was mine. I, I was totally lost in time and space. I was lost in that ring, you know. So I don't take it... Uh, as, as my defeat because I really wasn't there. I, I don't know. That wasn't me. That wasn't the savage. Everybody knows that, you know. So this is the first time in my life that happened. So I, I, I respect boxing much more now because I always thought I could never fall like on one knee and stuff. I'm not going to do that. I, 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 would, I, would, I would bet my life on it. And I would lose my life now <laughs> because I did that. And I, I did fell apart. In the ring, and uh, let me tell you, the ring is a very scary place. I didn't know that. You know, I did all those things, uh, went into with favorites and stuff. I was the underdog all of my career. So I know something about that, but this was totally different. So this was different. You know, I felt alone. I felt abandoned. I felt uh, tricked. You no, know, I felt everything wrong. Everything, everything that can go wrong went wrong that night. Everything. Everything you know, and to lose in the first round, by uh, it wasn't a knockout. I, I wish I was knocked out. I, I wish I was I would rather. I would rather be knocked out cold than just fell apart. I just fell, fell apart. You know, I fell apart like nothing. You know, it's crazy. Like I thought that can't happen to me. I'm still in shock. You know, so that's why you're the first interview interview I gave after my hometown interview i still you see i am just talking nonsense you know i still don't know exactly what happened you know? so that's why i, I want to take this time off at least one or two months you no know, i don't wanna i mean i i still fight every day i train boxing you know i i spar every day i do everything i can to to remain i don't know i don't know good in the head you know because if I don't train boxing, I'm not good. I'm not a good person. Alan, how much have you watched the 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 fight back, or have you tried to avoid it? I'm trying to avoid it to be sincere with you, but I watched it a couple of times, and like I said, it wasn't me in that ring. You know, I don't know what happened. I still do. I said it up to the fight. I still don't know what happened. What went through? I I went through. Perfect trainings. Oh, the only thing was, I didn't have sparring partners like I usually do. And my coach that I was with really pushed me to do hell and back. And that's what I need. I need some something like that. I can't be with this nor normal coaches, yes man, you know, and stuff. So I I can't do that, you know. I can't. I just I need to be pushed. I need to be punished. I need to be on you know, the verge of collapsing. That's the only kind of thing I know. And Dubai was too good to me. You know, it was perfect. It was too perfect. That I was scared of that, but uh, that was my last option. 
I didn't have any more options. It was like one month to the fight. So I did the best I could. You know? So I thought it was the best I could. Now I see what was a mistake, but now I know. <laughs> I paid that that uh, experience very high. And then obviously we spoke a couple of weeks ago and you said you were going to come over to the UK, speak to your management and kind of map out your plan and your route back. Uh, on the back of those discussions, what, what is next for you? Yeah, well, when I came to UK, I went to London for three days and it was perfect. Like you said, it wasn't a big deal. The first thing you said, it calmed me down because in Croatia, there is not such things as no big deal. Everything is a big deal here. When you win... And when you lose, you're done. <laughs> People think I'm done. I'm like, brothers, I have 11 and 1. And so it's it's not the end of the world. I don't, the, I'm not uh, fear of defeats. I said it many times. I, I am uh, fucked because of how it went. But, you know, 11 and 1 means nothing to me, you know. And people still want to see me. They, they said that in UK, of course, they want to see me. They proposed a fight very soon. But I said, I said, I said, for the first time in my life, I'm going to say no because I'm not mentally there. I'm not. I'm just not there. I can't even train properly. You know, I can't, I can't do nothing right now. No, I'm still in shock. And I try to train and keep my shape up and everything, but it's very hard. It's very hard for me every day just to go training, you know. But... I love boxing. I love boxing uh, with all my life. And that's the only thing that's keeping me sane right now, you know. So I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm really trying to get back. But I, I'm still not ready to talk about uh, maybe go back to my old trainer, maybe go to some English trainers. We talked about that. I can do some camp there. Maybe go to some camp to some some fighters, you know, maybe need for sparring. I talked to Dylan White immediately. I said, bro, that was the best camp of my life. So I want to do it again. <laughs> if you need me, I'm there, bro. If you want to save me. But he's going to America and do something there. So right now, the it's really, really tough situation because I don't know. I always knew what, what was next. You know, I had I had a fight after fight, like in weeks. I always knew what's next. But now when I lost that sight, I don't know what's next. I don't know. And I, I certainly, one thing I do know, I'm not going to get into the ring that I'm, until I'm there. I'm mentally there. You know, people don't understand the mental aspect of it. You know, I can be physically, I'm the same. Physically, I'm the same. But mentally, I'm, I'm very depleted. You know, and I need to, uh, I, like I said, the, the creation papers, I lost my boxing family. You know, I had, whole boxing family, it fell apart. Everybody went their way, you know, so I need to find a new family, you know, so that's, what, that's what I'm looking for now, you know. From, from, listening, some... from listening I to you talk, have... sorry, but from listening to you talk, Alan, of, of kind of Croatia and the people of Croatia turn their back on you a little bit from, from what you're saying? No, I can't say that. I have many supporters like before, maybe even more. But as your support grows, the grows the other the other side grows too, you know. So I have many naysayers, like I said in the beginning, they think I'm done and stuff. So that's really just ridiculous. As <laughs> I just started, so it's not like that. Croatia is, uh, but but I had it coming. Listen, I, I I burst onto the scene by talking shit, you know, talking smack. So can you imagine how many people just waited for my downfall? You know, but I like that. I like that, and I, I, I knew if I, I was going to be a public person, I knew this going to come. It's going to catch up to me, you know. I was talking to my fiance, beautiful. I was always talking to her, don't, don't get too into this. You know, everybody loves us. We are like some movie stars, you know, in my head. Everybody I said, don't get too comfortable, you know, because it will be over in one day. You will see. And exactly what I said, exactly that happened. You know, so I'm okay, you know, Croatia is a tough country and I deserve it in some points, but, you know, I'm going to get them back. That, that is my savage army. You know, they're, they're merciless. They're going to eat me alive. I said that a million times. I'm just a soldier in the ranks, you know, so I never saw myself as a commander or as a king. 
I'm not a king. I'm just a soldier with them. You know? And they turned them back. Some of them turned their backs on me. You know? So I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight to bring them back. Um, uh, Alan, obviously that last fight was a bridge of weight. You was pursuing that bridge of weight title. Uh, just in terms of when you do return, will you look to go back to bridge of weight or will you look to come back up to heavyweight? Well, like I said, this was the first fight that Dilia White didn't chose himself. You know, it was offered to us, and it went to shit. So I said, let's go back. You know, Dilia, choose my fights. I believe you. So whatever you want me to do. When I say Dillian, I mean the whole team around Dillian, not just him, but he's the main charge. So whatever you say, I will obey, like, like I did 11 fights. It was beautiful, you know, but my my uh, name got ahead of me, you know, and I started taking everything, everything. I just say yes to everything, and you can't do that, you know. So we did a lot of mistakes in the camp those last in the last two weeks of the camp, we did a lot of mistakes because I said yes to everything. And I don't know why they even asked me. And I have my team for that. But all of the decisions went through me. So I don't like that. I don't like it to be like, I'm a fighter. You know, and if you ask me something, I'm a pride, pride, proud man. I'm going to say yes. I'm a proud man. You know, I want to say yes to everything. And most of the time, it's a shit decision. Because listen, they told me you can't be emotional in this game, and I that's exactly what I am. I took everything emotionally, you know, and I I I, I let emotions get ahead of me and uh, this business, you know, this business, and I'm hurting my own business by being emotional and saying yes to everything. You know, so I gotta be smarter in the future. Would you feel happier moving back up to heavyweight just because that's where you had a great deal of success? Yeah, of course. Uh, like I told you, always everything is the same. I'm still a heavyweight fighter in my heart. Uh, normally, I'm a cruiserweight. If you want to say, I, but if we are a heavyweight, fuck you. <laughs> I'm still there. You know, I'm still there. I still want to fight the biggest guys out there. You know, my biggest man was what 270 pounds, to 260 something like that. So I like. I enjoy those those fights. I didn't enjoy my last fight. <laughs> I think it was shit. But I'm I'm ranked like top something in uh, cruiserweight, also in bridgeweight, in heavyweight. I think there's a lot, a lot of possibilities for Savage. I just I I just talk to my team to Dillian and I just tell him one thing: I I need to get back. And when I get back, I can do ten fights in ten days. I say here first: ten fights in ten days. I just need to get back in the game. I'm really off. I'm really off. No, my heart is not there. My head obviously not there. My boxing skills are not there. Everything is there, but I need to, I need to, uh, you know, I need to just touch it you know, to say what the fuck. I need to speak to my skills. <laughs> what what the fuck was it the last time? I want I want to speak to it like that. You know, so. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. You see, I, I'm in a different, I'm in a different place than we usually talk. I'm in a very dark place in my mind, you know. But now it's a part of the game, you know. I take it as such, you know. At the end, my Croatian army kind of turned it back on me. So, yeah, I, I, I felt abandoned many times in my life, you know. And this is just another time. So, it's not like I'm here the first time. No, no. If I was. I was talked uh, bad about my every fight, and I had uh, ten knockouts in a row, and I was still talking bad every fight. So nothing changes. You know? It's it's clear to see that you've struggled with this defeat mentally. Um, how, how difficult on a personal has that been? The mental aspect of suffering your first defeat. Yeah, well, like I said, I don't care about defeats, and I still think that. And I really don't care about 11 and 1. <laughs> you know, I don't care about that. So I don't, it's not, it's not the part that, that would, that would most will say, oh, I'm done. No, I don't care. I care about the way I lost, the way I performed, you know, the way I fell apart in the ring. That's the things that, that interest me. I'm learning this game. I'm still, I'm still, on a learning curve, you know, so now I'm much wiser now because I know that can happen to me. 
I, I didn't thought that. I had 100 amateur fights. I had all kinds of trash talking and stuff and pressure mounting everything. But I never fell apart. You know? And this time I fell apart and it was, it was such a scary place to say in that ring, you know, when, uh, when you don't feel protected. You know, oh, I always feel felt like I, I'm part of the, this team. I'm part of, you know, my coach is behind me and everything. This time I didn't feel nobody. I didn't feel, I didn't feel nothing in that ring. And uh, ring is a very scary place. I said that 10 times, but that's really what I mean. You know? So very scary. I didn't get punched in the face once. I don't know how, <laughs> what happened, but I didn't get punched. I didn't feel like, I mean, Bolski, my last fight, hurt me much more than this guy. Much more. And, and maybe 70 fights out of 100 were tougher than this fight. It really wasn't like that. It was pure mentally. That that loss was pure mental. It was nothing physical. Uh, so yeah. I don't know. And I you... myself from being a mental warrior. I was mentally tough. I went through shit and stuff, and and then boxing shows you you're nothing. You're nobody. <laughs> I don't know. You haven't really thought about. Uh potential fights from the sounds of it but when we did speak last before the, the Rosansky fight you mentioned um, potentially facing Derek Chisora the Dave Allen fight was being mentioned have you at least uh, at all spoken to, to your team about them would you still be interested in those fights when you're ready to return well, of course of course I am but listen like I said I'm, I'm nowhere near where I need to be that can change in one day that can click in one day, but I'm nowhere near fighting nobody right now. You know, I'm nowhere near sparring. Believe me, I spar like shit right now. And that is the, the most disturbing thing about this stuff because I really lost myself and I need to get back, you know, and I need some time off. I need some some time talking to myself and uh, seeing what's going to be next because, you know, this was, this was a mental defeat. It's much harder than just a physical one. Physical one doesn't do nothing to me. But a mental defeat, that does a whole lot, you know. So I, I can't go back in there with a head like this. You know, I know I know what, what a strong head needs to be because I had one, you know, and now I don't. So I know where I need to get back. I need to get back. And then we're going to talk opponents and stuff because I can't tell you nothing else now. That's completely understandable, Alan. Um, just a, a couple of things away from yourself. Uh, with Fabio Wardley, we obviously saw a massive ball out around a Fraser Clark fight that never happened. Did was you keeping your eye on the that scenario, everything that happened? Yeah, of course, of course, I did. I mean, for Wardley, my brother, a very brave brother, and uh, yeah, I I, I love that fight for him. It's there, it's a the heavy fight, it's a tough fight because my guy fought uh, Fraser in the amateurs and he says it's good, it's really good, very heavy, heavy handed and stuff. Uh, so, but I don't know what, what went wrong, you know, the, the politics got into it again, you know, and Worley is just a guy just like me, just wants to box. I just want to, I just want to box. And now he needs to be the lawyer, he needs to be accountant, he needs to be everything, you know, so I think that's what's true. That's, that fight is what is wrong with boxing right now, you know, because you do even Fabio, even me can't get the fights. So who who can get the fight? We are easiest guy in the whole business to make a fight with. And even us, we can't get get fights, you know. So I'm really, I mean, he's gonna be good, you know. It's not gonna be nothing, nothing terrible happened to him. So everything's gonna be good, you know. It's gonna be good. And Alan, just with um, Dillian White, there's a lot of talk of uh, the rematch with Anthony Joshua taking place next. Uh, if that does come to fruition, uh, Dillian will be the underdog heading into it. But how would you fancy his chances in a rematch with Anthony Joshua? I fancy Dillian over every, anybody. You know, so Dillian, Dillian learned what I'm learning right now. He told me, bro, I've been there four times. You know, I've been there four times. It's going to be good. I uh, said, so that was the first thing that I said, okay, so this happens to people, you know. I'm not the only one, you know, I'm not the only one. Because for some time I thought it only happens to me. You know, when your mind goes dark, you can't see the light, you know, can't see nothing. You really can't. So 
he said everything happened to me four times. So Dillian, Dillian is experienced, experienced Joshua, of course, but Joshua is kind of on the down spot. I, I don't know about the fight, you know, but it's like I said, I'm just looking forward to be called to Dillian by camp. <laughs> That's it. You know, whoever he's fighting, I'm going to back him up. You know, whatever happens, I'm still going to be there for him, like the first day, you know, because he was for me there in my toughest days of boxing. And just a final one, Alan. Um, a week before you fought, we saw a big, an upset victory when Zhilai Zhang stopped Joe Joyce. Um, since then, Joe Joyce has said he's going to invoke that rematch. Uh, do you think that would be the correct move? You've just suffered a, a big defeat, a stoppage defeat yourself, and you see that the week before you fought. Um, do you think it'd be correct for Joe Joyce to pursue an immediate rematch? Well, that's what I would do normally. I'm not in that place, but I said to my team, if you can get the ball to UK, I mean, I'm going to die for that opportunity. You know? So I'm, the, I'm, I'm, I'm circled. Joe Joyce thing is the same. But that's a very risky move for me and for him. You know, it's a do or die. It's a do or die, but that's my mentality my whole life. So I'll take the fight. For that fight, I'll be back in one day. You know, so I can understand why Joe Joyce wants it because his his uh, image in UK suffered also. You know, maybe the same as mine in Croatia. And I feel him. I feel, I feel the pain, you know, so... Uh, that will be the best if he can get back. If if I can get back, that will be the perfect scenario, you know. So now he he is also a very brave man, and I think that's a very brave thing to do because Jale took him apart just like this guy did to me. So I I feel him, you know. I feel I feel I feel his loss. I know what he's going through, you know. And now I know much more about boxing after that fight. So it's it's a great experience. I pay dearly, but I know a lot more about boxing right now. You know? So if he thinks he's ready, I'm going to watch the fight. You know, I'm going to be in his corner. Alan, I'm going to leave the final word to yourself. Um, is there anything you'd like to say to your savage army, to your team, to your fans, to, to anybody as you kind of enjoy your downtime, but you get ready to uh, make your way back into the, the boxing world? Yes, my savage army... Uh, what can I tell you? Uh, we took a fall. We took a beating, you know. My savage army took a great hit. But that's good, you know, because we, we rose from nothing and we're going we're gonna to go back go back if needed, you know. And I'm going to be back, my savage army. For all you guys, I said, you can do it, you know. And now, who would I be to say, no, you can't. No, no we're going to do it. We're going to go with this till the end, you know. You're going to see the end of me in the ring, not in the you know, like this, you know, so I say, Jeremy, bear with me, you know, I love you, like, the first day, you know, and you, all of you who say bad things about me, you're, you're all my people, you know, you're all savage, Jeremy, I all love you, it's nothing but love for the savage, so I'm gonna be back, and watch me, watch, me because when I get back into that state, I'm gonna be dangerous, I'm gonna be a very dangerous guy. Alan, it's a pleasure as always. Uh, I hope you continue to enjoy your, your time away from the sport and I look forward to seeing you back soon and I'll catch up with you again soon with that in mind. Thank you for speaking to me and yeah, just enjoy your downtime. Thank you, brother Andy. Be good, be good. Thank you.